This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, June the 4th, 2019. It's a day to think about those who can't speak for themselves. On the religious side, it's the feast of St. Filippo Smaldone, born 1848 in Naples, Italy, and the founder of the Salesian Sisters of the Sacred Hearts. He was known as a great preacher and gave a lot of attention to quality instruction, catechesis, and to the young. And that would be all well and good. Lots and lots of priests in history did that very well. But Father Filippo did all of this with the deaf and the mute in a time well before there were social services or even a unified sign language or even a general sense of equality for the handicapped. Now, it's not as if we're talking about the Dark Ages. It's not the 7th century in which he lived, but most of his work took place between 1900 and 1920 in Italy. A big chunk of that is World War I. The government is in disarray, and so it wasn't an easy thing to do. And it would have been easy enough to ignore the deaf and the mute and give attention to the many other people in need. But Father Filippo is a great reminder of the many, many priests, nuns, brothers, sisters, and lay Catholics who have been there for people with special needs all through history. As Father Filippo was doing his ministry, there were others working to establish schools and special accommodations for the deaf and the mute. But the church had been at that work for centuries by the time any government found the resources to get something done. Father Filippo is a good reminder of the many Catholics now and then who are loving and serving those who aren't being cared for by anyone else. And so Father Filippo and the many other unknown saints who worked with the deaf and the mute pray for us. On the secular side today, it's been exactly 30 years since the Chinese government, the same government that's in charge today, the Communist Party of China, silenced protesters in Tiananmen Square. 1989 was a heady time. The USSR was collapsing. Communism was collapsing around the world. China's longtime leader had died unexpectedly. And there were some capitalist markets beginning to develop on China's borders. There was a sense that the brutally violent and oppressive Chinese Communist Party would be toppled. And a measure of freedom would come to that part of the world. Students in Beijing and in 400 cities around the nation had been launching small-scale protests and rallies. Some were peaceful, some became violent, but all had been for the cameras and for the underground press. It was to get the word out to people that they didn't have to live this way. To get a sense of China then, we kind of want to think about North Korea nowadays. Super secretive, All the news and TV are made by the state as propaganda. There's no freedom of speech, no freedom of press or assembly. There's no internet at the time back then. No free speech on the internet even today. No separation of courts, legislature, and executive branch. There's no safe space for criticizing the government. And these student protests were picking up momentum in early 1989. And then at the end of May in Tiananmen Square, students gather for a huge hunger strike. And they were still there on June the 4th, 1989. The Communist Party leadership decided to respond with force. And in the early morning, they sent more than a quarter million troops into the gigantic square, killing demonstrators and bystanders alike. The world community found out and everyone, I mean everyone, turned on China. China became the definition of a pariah state. Boycotts, embargoes, sanctions, you name it, every nonviolent thing that could be done to wag the finger at China was done. Sadly, the Chinese didn't care. They rolled back any freedoms that had been gained and made the nation even more oppressed. And it wasn't until 1997, with the transfer of Hong Kong, that China began to recover economically and in the economic recovery to recover culturally. It's still a good day, though, to pray for the Chinese, those who died and those who didn't. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.